Uh, I've been in the industry for 41 years. Uh, yes, I'm that old. Uh, I didn't start when I was two. Uh, I tried to collect the set of the built environment work experiences. And about 21 years ago, I went to the dark side of construction. Uh, but the light's not too bad once your eyes adjust. It's pretty creative industry, actually. I really enjoyed myself. 18 years with Hoffman. Started on the Experience Music Project, working for Frank Gehry. And uh, that's when I learned about 3D models. Talk about getting thrown in the deep end of the pool. And, uh, and then we built the Seattle Central Library. And we took what we learned on EMP and tried to apply it to the library. But the library was a public project with you know, low, low successful bidders across the board and, and no 3D models to start with. Everything was paper. But we were able to implement our BIM workflow on that library very successfully. And from that became our foundation for doing 3D and 2D. We heard a lot about Bluebeam just then. 2D and 3D coordination on all of our projects. So uh, what, uh, what I wanted to talk about, just I know we don't have a lot of time, and appreciate you guys staying longer. Uh, I want to just talk about bigger, like a bigger topic than looking at details associated with document coordination. And what I mean by that is looking for information, let's say you're the, uh, let's use an example, let's say you're doing the excavation, okay, and there's the mass excavation and structural excavation. Well, the civil drawings are not going to show you where the bottom of that hole you have to dig is going to be. And in fact, none of the drawings are really going to show you that explicitly. You're going to have to go into the structural drawings and look at the foundation systems and understand what all that looks like. You're going to have to go to the electrical drawings to find out where the duct banks go. You're going to have to go to the utility drawings to find out where the storm, sanitary, water lines all go. All those things fall under the general heading of excavation. And then you're going to look at, in this case, Hoffman's bid documents that are going to tell you how much they want you to dig of each system, if any, and then look at our schedules to know when you need to dig. That tells you how much equipment you're going to need to bring out. So this document coordination topic is a big deal. So, you know, if you're the concrete contractor, uh, yes, you, you're, most of your information is in the structural drawings, but something like a, a recess in the slab for uh, a tile floor in a bathroom, that's going to be on the architectural drawings. Uh, Blockouts for ductwork, it's going to be in the mechanical. You see, you see my point. You're going to have to learn a lot of different systems in order to be successful. And, and we heard earlier about languages and how important it is to know language. Well, this is another language. This is like learning how to read sheet music or learning how to speak, you know, maybe uh, Japanese, where it's all in different symbols and we're used to, you know, 26 letters. And it takes a lifetime to really master it. So I would really uh, encourage you not to be frustrated if you're in the middle of this giant, you know, 1,100 sheet set of drawings, because le let me tell you, everybody looking at that set of drawings is equally frustrated as you. It's, it's a lot to uh, take on. Uh, next, maybe next slide. So a couple more examples. Finishes, a big one. Let's say you're the drywall contractor. It's pretty easy. It's not, you know, that terribly hard to figure out all the square footages for all the different rooms and figure out how many sheets. But your labor factor isn't really going to be about that. It's going to be about how many light switches are on the wall and how many, you know, edges you have to deal with and what's behind that. And all that, you know, they say the devil's in the details. It's really true. Uh, you know, you're going to need to know plumbing, mechanical, electrical for all those finishes. Uh, carpentry, you can imagine all the backing and all the, you know, clips and everything that's going to fall under that scope. You're going to have to understand all the other traits uh, in that sense. And you get my point uh, all the way through. It doesn't really matter what trade you're in. You really do need to know about the other trades well enough to know how they affect your work. I think that's really, really critical. Uh, one, one thing I wanted to talk about is the difference between um, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing versus um, civil, structural, and architectural. So these are the six big categories of discipline that we all work in. 
And what's interesting to me is that in the civil, structural, and architectural disciplines, almost everything that you install is explicitly dimensioned on the drawings. The, the windows are located, the, uh, the beams are located, the utility vaults are located with dimensions. So you can figure out exactly how long everything is by looking at dimensions. In the case of mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, it's shown implicitly. They imply the, um, the intention rather than explicitly where they explain the intention. And so it, I think you heard it a little earlier that you know they'll show you basically a circuit diagram on the electrical drawing. And it's coming upon you to figure out what the route is to get from the first part to the last part in order to be successful. And the drawings are not going to tell you that. So your approach to MEP is much different as an estimator or construction coordinator or as a builder than it is on CSA. And that's something to really keep in mind when you're looking through these sets. Um, I think um, just in the interest of time, I wanted to talk about one more thing because I'm going to jump into a little bit about BIM. And I know there's been a lot of interest in this. So I'm going to use an analogy. And the analogy is just the simplest little five-gallon aquarium tank that you can imagine. We've all seen the little glass cubes, you know, four sides and a bottom. Now, in the, in the old way of doing drawings, let's say there's a, uh, there's a plastic plant, one of those little bubbling treasure chests, and, and then you've got your gravel that's going to be a certain topology, okay? It's a really simple example. If you wanted to do a set of drawings that depicted that little assembly, you could do an elevation view, maybe two of them, looking from the side. You could do a plan view, and then maybe you heard about sections. You could do a section right through here, looking that direction, and then maybe a detail. Okay, so these are the these are the typical ways that we communicate in our drawings the intention of this little aquarium. Now, what would happen if that um, that plastic plant needed to move over here? Every one of these drawings would need to be changed. Every view of that includes that plant, and every one of them has to be changed. And that's where the BIM really uh, comes in handy. Because when we do BIM, what we do is we build a model of that aquarium with all the elements in it, right in the computer. And then anytime we want to create a drawing from it, we create a view just like these arrows show, and we apply those views to our drawing set. The, the big advantage is that if you know the client comes back and says, hey, we want to move that plant over, uh, or the, the contractor installs it in the wrong place, but actually everybody liked it there, and that's where it goes, well, you didn't move it in the model, and all the drawings are updated automatically. It really cuts away from all the errors for, of forgetting Oh, that detail, I never changed that detail, you know. And then your drawing set's not right. So that's one of the big advantages of BIM. Another really big advantage is uh, that people get this better, you know. When, you know, when we do 1,100 sheets of drawings that we're all looking at, what we've done is basically exploded that building into thousands of different little glimpses of it. And you all and all of us have to put it all back together in our heads as we're flipping through all these sheets. We're actually building the model back in our heads in our own imaginations. And our abilities to do that have a lot to do with how successful we are in this industry. And what the 3D models allow us to do is, is, is not explode it and then rebuild it. We just keep it built. We get the models from the design team. Then the construction team takes them and adds more detail to them. We're, we're going forward. We're never taking it apart. Uh, and so, you know, and this is what you get. I mean, this tells a much richer story about what we have in mind than these drawings. Question? Just, just to add to that, one thing I hear that's missing from the, the benefits of them is the ability to pre-coordinate pre that spatial coordination work it out in a 3D model, and then the, the utopia that is unspoken or understated is the ability to prefabricate your content. Because when you're yeah. able to coordinate at that level of detail, 
And then you as a subcontractor have the ability to prefabricate your content. It's easier and cheaper to install. You, you can end up making more money and get less mistakes out of you. Thank you. It's less less material waste. You're actually saving on a, what we guys we call a composite rate. Is that right? Because yeah. you got apprentices that work on it rather than you know forming out in the field, blood around stuff. So they just install. So I mean, we didn't intend this to be a topic about BIM. That's actually coming up on another night, I believe. But uh, I think one of the things. Uh, like when we were struggling, we were all, all of us struggling with that sound transit when we were going through all the drawings because it's really complicated, right, as an organizational structure. Whenever you're confronted with that kind of a complexity, I would really encourage you to just get your head wrapped around what the big picture is. You know, get to know, you know, what AP010 really means. You know, really get that knocked in your head. And every project's going to be unique in that regard. And, and once you get that, then go into the details and start navigating through. And then, you know, in that case where there's three different files and the sheets are all numbered sequentially throughout all three, build yourself a little spreadsheet. You know, Dan was going to start one, it looks like, just to get through it. And just map it all out so that you can, you can have a little cheat sheet going. Um, that way, you're not going to waste a lot of time, like, you know, going tripping through those sheets all the time. You're, your, your mind's only going to be able to take in so many pieces of input in an eight-hour day. And you want, to, you want to focus it on the most important things, not all that little minutia, you know? Because you're, you're, you're going to go after some big concepts, especially if you're doing estimating. It's probably the riskiest aspect of construction. We're all focused on executing the work and making mistakes out in the field or minimizing them. But estimating, by far, is where I think most of the risk is because, you know, they say, you know, the low bidder is the one with the losing hand in the poker game, right? So you have to be right there, right at the right price. And if you don't have really good knowledge about what it is you're going after, you, you know, it's risky. Most of us are going to be doing a lot with drawings for our entire careers, no matter what age you are. I would recommend if you're in the construction industry, you should get Blue Bean. It's, it's really not very expensive, and it's really, really powerful. And it's, it's one of those soft, I'll get you just a moment. It's one of those programs that is improving really rapidly. They're really aggressively improving it, and they're they're listening to our industry. They don't they're not talking to architects so much. They're talking more to construction people and giving us tools that we've been asking for for years and years and years. I think he had the next question, and then you. We're we tried plan grid. Yeah, it's similar, but it's cheaper, I guess. Yeah, I I I'm going to say it again. I recommend you get blue bean. Okay. I think it's really good. Yeah. Our, and and we expensive. we do a lot of estimating on Bluebeam. It's not a it's not a estimating program, but we do a lot of estimating on Bluebeam. I, I teach electrical estimating. Uh -huh. so. And then you had a question. Uh, we do mostly the grading for the asphalt. Yeah. What program is that for us? Uh, are you talking about uh, takeoffs on drawings? On the drawings and you know all the stuff for the asphalt. I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I, if you're talking about PDFs, you, you should get Bluebeam and use and learn how to use it for doing your quantity takeoffs. It's not going to generate your prices, but it'll generate your quantities. Okay. Did you guys ever do a class on Bluebeam? Hey, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. First of all, before we answer that question, can I get a round of applause? Yeah. 